We're up with News 8. Remember the times. Yes, I love seeing that old footage. Yeah, yes. This is an exciting little series we're working on here. So glad you're going to be a part of it, everyone. And thanks so much for waking up with us at 6 yes. a.m. I'm Eric Connors. I'm Stella Escobedo. Good morning to you. Let's go ahead and check it with Netta now because uh, get ready for summer-like conditions. Wow. <laughs> yeah, do you remember the time when things were really hot, you know, in the summer? Today is going to feel that Josh. way. So right. there you go. Uh, we are looking at, you know, smaller waves along our coast. This is the view from Cardiff. Of course, it's still dark. Uh, you know, this delayed sunrise my goodness all of our live cameras it's just hard to show you the beauty of our city when it's so dark but check this out we do have that really early morning glow because our sunrise is not until 703 this morning uh, but you know that initial glow is always nice first dibs on that view uh, when you wake up early with us uh, today's the warmest day of the week near 90 degrees Santa Ana winds they're upon us they've been coming through drying things out a bit so our fire fire weather's elevated and then everything changes in time for this Halloween weekend. We'll have that full forecast coming up. Jenny. It kind of got busy traffic wise, but it's all concentrated to one little section here. You see it. We've got all these icons. Good morning to you, by the way. So let me zoom in. We've got this crash that we're dealing with on the 15 South Bond side right before you hit Ocean View Boulevard. That middle lane is blocked. We've got that left hand shoulder blocked as well. So you can see we've got those backups building on the 15. Now on the five heading South Bond right before you hit the Coronado Bridge. So right over here, we do have a crash blocking just a single lane, but already we've got volume on that South Bond commute North Bond side is building as well. You can see that stretches back uh, to the National City area. Coronado Bridge, there's a stalled car. You laugh, right, because it's minor, but it is causing a little bit of a mess. We've got that second lane blocked. Uh, they're trying to get it out of the way. So you can see once you pop on all the way through the entire span of the bridge, you're down to about 40 miles an hour. The northbound side of the five through National City, passing Harbor all the way to Main Street towards Imperial, you're down to about 17 miles an hour. Today, a TikTok star accused of murdering his wife and her friend will appear before a judge. And it comes as a family member is opening up to us about his troubled marriage. News 8 7 Narani is live outside the Hall of Justice downtown with more on that part of the story. Good morning, Evan. And good morning to you as well. That's right. We are downtown where Ali Abulaban is expected to be back in court again today following Monday's arraignment where he pleaded not guilty to two counts of first degree murder. Now, of course, to his nearly one million TikTok followers, he's known as Jin Kid uh, doing impressions and as an all around funny guy. But News 8 spoke with his cousin who grew up with him since childhood, who says that as he saw his marriage deteriorate over the last several months, that he turned into a much different guy. He just became super jealous because his wife was going out with friends and he wasn't involved and he, he wanted to control her. He wanted to know what she was doing every time of the day. Now, Abulaban was arraigned on Monday in a downtown San Diego courtroom. He entered a plea of not guilty to all counts and allegations. He was booked into jail on two counts of first degree murder. This after his wife and her male friend were found shot to death in the woman's apartment one week ago. Now, Ali's cousin spoke with News 8 saying that when the couple moved to San Diego, that Ali's wife, Anna, saw her social life flourishing. But he says that's also when Ali became, quote, extremely jealous and furious. Louis says in a text with Anna, that it was clear her marriage with Ali was crumbling when she kicked him out of the apartment. But Louis says Ali was always in denial about this and thought that they were going to get back together. Uh, it was only then shortly after that Ali was accused of shooting and killing his wife and the man that she had in that apartment with her. They say police say that he had made an extra key to be able to get into that apartment. And they say that their five year old daughter was not present at the time. But when he was arrested, that daughter, that five year old daughter was then brought to family to stay with. Now that daughter no longer has a mother and Ali Abulaban, her father, is uh, being charged with those two counts of first degree murder. So he will appear again in court today. We are still awaiting more details on what exactly will be taking place, but that is expected to happen this afternoon just around 1 30. I'll send things back to you, Stella and Eric. All right, Evan, thanks. The man accused of murdering Chula Vista mother Maya Miliente is dealing with more legal trouble. A judge ruled that Larry Miliente violated a protective order involving his three children. He was ordered not to have any contact, but prosecutors say he has since made nine hours worth of calls to them. The judge cut off Miliente's phone privileges other than to contact his attorney. Larry Miliente's attorney says that she is going to file a motion to allow him to speak to his children. 
Family and friends are remembering a 13-year-old North County boy who died from an undetected heart condition. They held a vigil for Marco. He attended Madison Middle School in Oceanside. The Vista Unified School District says he became sick while at school last Friday. He was rushed to the hospital where he later died. A celebration of life is scheduled for Saturday afternoon at Mans Buchanan Park from 2 to 7 p.m. We are staying on top of a school controversy that's making waves around our high school sports community. The head coach at Lincoln High School is opening up about his decision to cancel tomorrow's game against Cathedral Catholic. And News 8's Chris Groh is here with the message to the community. Good morning, Chris. Yeah, good morning, Eric and Stella. And you may remember some of this story from about six months ago. It was the last time the Cathedral Catholic and Lincoln actually played on the gridiron. Well, during that game, a Cathedral Catholic player wore a shirt that read, Catholics versus convicts. Now, for those of you that are unfamiliar with that phrase, it dates back to 1988. It was coined by Notre Dame students before their marquee and heated matchup with the University of Miami. Now, Lincoln head football coach David Dunn says canceling this Friday's game is necessary because of that incident. He believes that there are still other issues that involve racism and unfairness that are that are being swept under the rug and not addressed. Now, Cathedral Catholic has already been sanctioned for that shirt incident, but Coach Dunn says this cancellation is his way of continuing to stand up for his players. Just having it as fair as it could possibly be without all of this extra nonsense and not bringing race or, 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 or anything into it. Now, it's not clear if Lincoln or Cathedral will have to forfeit this game or how it's going to work from a competitive standpoint. But the CIF did release a statement that says it supports environments free from racism. However, they also added in part, quote, anytime a decision is made to not participate in a previously scheduled athletic contest, our student athletes miss out on an opportunity to come together, represent their community, and benefit from the lifelong lessons learned from participation in interscholastic athletics. Eric and Stella. Chris, thank you. San Diego Unified is now revealing how it will spend $303 million on federal money from the American Rescue Plan Act. They said a majority of it will be devoted to help students recover academically, academically that is socially, emotionally from COVID. The district will also invest $9.4 million of it into implementing ethnic studies to their curriculum. Each month, the district will track the number of participants in the Ethnic Studies Professional Development Series, as well as yearly monitoring on how many elementary classes are utilizing resources. One South Bay community is celebrating a big grand opening today. Yeah, the Market on 8th Food Hall in National City is having a big celebration. Features more than a dozen vendors with diverse tastes. There's also an outdoor beer garden. The developer says he wanted to create a communal atmosphere where people can meet their neighbors. Love that idea on a Thursday like today here that we're going to be having. Oh, perfect. Yeah, um, Mother Nature didn't get the memo because Halloween's right around the corner and we're talking <laughs> yeah. about summer like conditions, right. Netta. <laughs> um, at, Wait, least, um, at least you're saying Halloween is not going to be yeah. hot. It's not going to be a hot Halloween because I know that's always weird, right? Whenever we have. Am I in studio A or B? I, I, okay, that's where I'm walking. Sorry, guys. I was confused on where to go. So here we are. Let's talk about your forecast. Today's a hot one. It's going to feel very summer-like. And then we do have that cooler weather for the weekend. It'll feel more appropriate with the times, I would say, uh, for this coming weekend. Now, looking at our views right now, obviously, it's still dark. As I talked about, it's the warmest day of the week today. We're going to have a lot of sunshine today. Santa Ana winds are upon us as well. Here's a look at Mount Soledad's view. It's always nice when you can see all the way to Tijuana, right? 57 degrees for downtown San Diego. No patchy fog to worry about. Not even a cloud in the sky. I mean, you can see those stars, even some planets out there. Uh, so, you know, we had some uh, pretty clear conditions. 53 in Poway, 52 Escondido, 57 for downtown, 61 in Chula Vista right now. So you're feeling the warmer weather. The warm air of yesterday kind of stuck around in the overnight hours. We're also noticing that breeze. It has been picking up in just the past hour. 32 mile per hour gusts in Julian, 36. Booker Hill. Overall, these are dry Santa Ana winds coming up from the desert. So that's why we do have that elevated fire concern. Our wind gust forecast does show pretty high winds from now until this afternoon. So 30 to 40 miles per hour. That's in our forecast for the mountains and then the west slope of the mountains. So if you live in Ramona, Escondido, Fallbrook, you'll likely notice that breeze coming through, which is why we have this wind advisory for a lot of our inland valleys. That's going to end at three o'clock today. And then when 
wind direction changes on us. Taking a look at our relative humidity, I'm keeping an eye on this because as you know, when we get Santa Ana winds, these numbers tend to drop a lot. Uh, where we're noticing somewhat of a drop would be in Alpine. Overall, there's still a bit of moisture in the air, so it hasn't zapped out too much, uh, but it might for the next few hours. As we get the heat to build, the winds coming through, you know, things will feel drier. It's definitely not that onshore effect that we typically get. So looking at the next 12 hours, I mean, look at this 10 o'clock this morning, you'll be at 75 degrees and then 85 by two o'clock this afternoon. All kinds of sun coming through. We'll stay pretty clear for most of the night and then we'll get more clouds for this weekend. So the marine layer will make a comeback. Afternoon highs for inland valleys, 90 degrees. Are you ready for this day? It's going to feel warm. I would say hydrate now. Make sure you have that sunblock on because, uh, yeah, it's going to feel a lot like summertime. Jenny. So uh, pretty busy traffic wise, especially over to the south. We've got higher travel times and a couple of crashes that are impacting your freeways. Zooming in, first of all, to this particular crash on the 50. This is impacting the southbound side right before you hit Ocean View Boulevard. What we're dealing with is uh, middle lane is blocked. We've got crews there, plus that shoulder is blocked as well. You can see we've got some min minimal backups on that southbound drive. So far, northbound 15 looks okay. I'm going to zoom into the 5 southbound right before you hit the Coronado Bridge. We've got crews dealing with a crash here. Seems to be pretty minor. Single lane is blocked here. You can see a little bit of a backup starting to uh, approach the Coronado Bridge. Now, the bridge itself, you've got volume the entire way. It's not horrible, but you are down uh, beneath the speed limit there. We've got a stalled car as well, so crews are trying to get it out of the way. Second lane is blocked, kind of mid-span on the bridge there. I'm going to show you your travel times. The bridge, you're down to about 20 miles an hour. You can see that northbound 5, down to about 40 miles an hour, just past National City Boulevard to about Main Street, and then again towards Imperial. That 15, 17 miles an hour you get on that southbound commute due to that crash. Now, the North County, your travel times here, completely different story. I don't see any backups. A little bit of volume south on the 15 from the 78. This is fairly standard, but currently at 612, no crashes reported.